my executive of the year pick, which we're about to, we're about to talk about right now. I got Travis Schlenk, the Hawks general manager, as my executive of the year. Uh, Ooh. All, the, all the moves yeah. he's I, honestly he probably could have and maybe should have won it last year, but all the moves he's made, all the moves he's been making, just over these over his entire career so far have been really really solid. He's built a really solid team. He drafted really really well. He continues to draft really really well. I think he's probably going to win it. And if he doesn't win it, I could see the um, the Bulls executive. I th- what was his name again? Um, Mark Eversley. He's, he's their new general manager. I could see him getting it as well. I think it's between those two for executive of the year. Um, a lot of people are, you know, kind of point out executives of big teams, but like they're already big teams, you know, executive of the year is kind of more like a, what did you do to really make your team better and, you know, improve them. And so, yeah, I, 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 got, I think it's between Travis Schlenk and um, Eversley. Yeah, this was one of the ones like I kind of really couldn't come up with, uh, to be honest. I was just sort of like going with Pat Riley, to be honest. Yeah, um, no, that's a good one. It, especially with that Kyle Lowry trade, yeah. right? They didn't make too many big losses over there. I mean, yeah, Gordon Drogic, he's a good – he's one, he's a really good uh, guard scorer for them. And Precious Achua as well. Uh, he's definitely one of those guys that you should watch out for in these next yeah. coming years. I mean, but he wasn't getting – too many minutes in Miami, right? So I think getting Kyle Lowry as well to also pair with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Now you can have Jimmy Butler a bit more off ball and have Kyle Lowry sort of being one of those main playmakers as well. And Kyle Lowry does also add some defensive identity to that team, especially in the paint. He'll definitely be one of those guys that, you know, will definitely cheese your team. Everybody's complaining about him, but this guy, he gets... He draws those charges. He draws those charges. He got that good forward. He gets them really easily, right? And I think that this Kyle Lowry, like, move is really going to help propel the heat up there, especially now yeah. that Jimmy Butler will have a lot more freedom offensively, right? It, this is – it's kind of it's kind of hard because, then again, it really depends how far the heat can go this season. If they can, If they can really get up there, maybe even top three in the East, and that will validate that decision – then I can see uh, Pat Riley getting uh, executive of the year. Yeah, the East is going to be so hard to predict. I don't know if we want to make a video predicting like the exact seedings of everything. Um, that would be something good to talk about. That'll probably be a little bit in the future. Uh, I'm not sure if we have time before this season because the season literally starts as of when we're recording this, literally tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's a Pat Riley is a good pick. He's a great pick every year. I mean, he has a chance every year. Let's be honest. Yeah, he's he's just he's just consistently great. Right? Yeah, he's a consistently just great general manager, and um, you know he he does a lot for that team. And in my opinion, I mean, if you had to ask me right now, like who 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 are the top four teams in the East? Man, I mean Brooklyn, obviously the Bucks. Uh, I'd put Atlanta in that conversation seriously. Um, and I'd probably put the Heat in there as well. Uh, I think if any team's going to fall, it's probably going to be the Sixers, but that's kind of a different. I'm kind of surprised that you actually don't have the Sixers up there in your top four. I just think that they need another. If they're not going to get anything back for Ben Simmons right now, like they need somebody. As, but as long as Ben Simmons is still on yeah. the team. And like you said, if, if you expect them to sit him, I think Embiid will be having a lot of great performances, but I'm not sure if it'll help them win a lot. They need to depend a lot on Tyrese Maxey, on Doc Rivers actually coaching throughout the regular season. And, um, you know, they have to rely on a lot of people stepping up. Uh, And I'm not sure if off the bat they're going to be great. They might gain some steam down down the road as they go. I could definitely see them. I, I definitely think they're probably top five. I just I, I think the top four teams right now are so locked and loaded and just ready to go off the gate, yeah. and they're all hungry and they all want they all want a top seed except for the Nets. I, I think they really don't care, uh, but the rest of the teams are really hungry. You know they they want a top seed. They want home court advantage to playoffs, and I could definitely see uh, a lot of our dark horses for all of our awards being picked, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. Looking back, I think Trey Young. I probably should put Trey Young in my top three because now I'm thinking about it. Like I really think the Hawks might get. A, a serious top three seed and he's and Trey Young put up some great numbers last year he's going to put up some 
possibly Dude, even better. Dropping like team. dropping like fifty one in the in his first playoffs. Yeah. Holy shit, man! That that's just. I mean, he he put himself in like that plethora of like the elites who've done that, and he's just so young, and that team is just exciting, man. And like like we were saying, the Sixers. It's a it's a lot of conditionals. Like okay. What, it, it really depends. Okay, when are they when are they going to trade Simmons? I, I think he's going to get traded for sure. If, is he going to sit out, right? I, I think he's going to sit out as well, right? It also depends when they make the trade, who they make the trade for. And also, like, the amount of time, the amount of time that Embiid's playing, he's definitely going to get more responsibility now. Is his health going to keep up? And you were saying Tyrese Maxey as well. He's going to be inserted into the guard lineup uh, as the starting guard. And that's what I've been seeing. Uh, reports of him taking Ben Simmons' spot as well. If he's yeah. going to be able to elevate his game, right, then then maybe. But it, see, it's a lot of what ifs right now uh, for the Sixers. So I can sort of I can sort of understand that a bit more now, right? So I think Tyrese Maxey will though. To to put that on the record, he's a Kentucky guy. Kentucky consistently kills the NBA. You know they got some. That is true. They I they just happen to breed some amazing talent. <laughs> I'm telling you, they don't coach to win in college. They coach to get prospects in the NBA. They do not, you know, they obviously care about winning, but, you know, their main goal, you can tell, is to develop their guys for the NBA, and that's what they do. Um, So any future college prospects watching, if you want to go to the NBA, go to Kentucky. Uh, That's all I'll say. Uh, Oh, I also do want to give one more small shout-out. I don't think this is going to happen, but I think he could be in the voting for executive of the year. Tommy Shepard, the executive of the Wizards. This is extremely conditional, but if the Wizards still manage to make playoffs or if they manage to even get a seat above what they were last year with Russell Westbrook, if they manage to look better, he's in serious contention because trading Russell Westbrook, even though it was kind of a, you know, it took a lot of stones to make that move. Um, he did it for a lot of depth and he used it. He used the, that late pick he got from Westbrook, from the Westbrook deal to trade for even more depth and then also Isaiah Todd. So there's a lot of conditionals with Tommy Shepard, but I think he's in the conversation because of how dramatic his moves have been. And if, and if after all those moves and signing Dinwiddie as well, if after all those moves, the team is just as good as last year or maybe slightly better, I do think he's going to be in serious contention. Yeah. Yeah, that Westbrook trade was really surprising. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not see that coming, but to see the depth that they got, and then getting Dinwiddie too. Yep. Because the thing was, Dinwiddie was expecting like a 100 million kind of type of deal, 100 plus million type of deal in the Nets. And, you know, he was also expressing interest about, hey, maybe we could run it back if, you know, they were able to make it. But to see him get that deal with the Wizards, that was a really, really good move by them. And also, he replaced Scott Brooks with Wes Unsell Jr., who... Honestly, just through three season alone, I've seen so many more improvements in the rotations, in the minutes given, in how players are being used. I mean, Denny, Denny Avdia got to post up occasionally, and it led to two scores. He didn't score himself, but he, he uh, dished it out from the low post to somebody who scored. And, you know, I think that's you – know, look, he's actually using his playmaking abilities, right? He's actually utilizing all this player's abilities, trying to build a system around them. Uh I would have said he's in the coach of the year discussion, but I do not think they're going to win enough games for that. And I also do not think that uh, I don't think he's going to measure up to the other coaches. that are going to be in the discussion because there's so many good coaches. Uh, even if Wes Unsell Jr. is a great coach, I don't see the Wizards making any higher than a six seed at all. I think that's the absolute peak. And I don't think a six seed is good enough to win a coach of the year. Sorry, I love you, Wes Unsell Jr., but that's just that's the reality. But with all these other great coaches out here, right? So, well, at least yeah, that, on the bright that, that's side, on my, that's all my bias out of the way. Go ahead, Spark. On the bright side, you're not going to have a four guard lineup. Yes, that, finally breathe easy on <laughs> that. Is for sure a guaranteed yes. W, and you can rest easy now. So, yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to. To the Wizards, I think it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, that's all I really got to say on all the awards. Thank you all for watching. If you watch this far, drop a like, subscribe. There's no way you're not interested if you watch this far. Um, yeah, that you don't have to. Go ahead, just do it if you want to. Uh, well, you really should. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got. Uh, this has been Bert.
This is Sparsh. And we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of the Speak True Sports Podcast. Thank you for watching. Take it easy.